Right, welcome back to the channel everyone. So you might notice I'm stood right bang in the middle of a normally very busy road. Luckily there's road, well not luckily, but there are roadworks going on behind me. And I just thought I'd take the opportunity to set up a nice shot going, looking down the road essentially. I mean, how often do you get to do that? And obviously we will have a little bit of background noise in the intro, but I think it's worth it just, just to get this, this framing really. Now, bike beside me is another Vosges. It's the 350 AC. AC stands for Advanced Custom in Vosges terminology. And basically what you've got is a sub 400cc Roadster. You've got a 322cc parallel twin, but it's outputting 40 horsepower through a six speed box, 17 inch wheels front and rear, non-adjustable forks, nice color display, just all the quality that you expect from a Vosges essentially. Now, this bike in isolation would be a fine purchase at uh, four grand, which is its manufacturer's recommended selling price. You'll probably be able to find it for three and a half to seven at the dealer. However, it's not in isolation. It exists within one of the most hotly contested segments of the market. And in that segment, you've got bikes like Triumph Speed 400 and Royal Enfield's Gorilla 450. And these are the kind of like sort of five grand and below small capacity, lightweight road bikes that people buy just on an impulse. Now, this Vosge is less well known. It's got less brand recognition than the Royal Enfield, the Triumph. Those bikes have also got an established aftermarket. They've got a, a big, probably a bigger dealer network and they've got probably more owners uh, of the bikes. So this is like going into the ring with Mike Tyson essentially, or two Mike Tysons. So Vosge has got his work cut out I'm going to test ride the bike and see if there's any areas where the Vosges can sort of pull back any punches, score any points. Now, I'm not going to hypothesize just yet in the video where the Vosges will do well, but let me just give you some clues. It's a, it's a parallel twin, six speed, okay, and the pricing three and a half to four grand. And let's just think about that as we go into the video. Now, I'm going to cut now into some city riding. Hmm. Thanks, buddy. Guy just let me out. Appreciate that. So, we begin our quest to understand the little Vosges with a little jaunt, a jaunt de tete, into the town of Worcester. And uh, I very rarely go into the town on these vlogs because I just find it quite boring and um, you're stuck in traffic a lot of the time and I like the aesthetics of being out and about in nature. I, I really was brought up in the country, I love the countryside and for me being in the town is not as much fun as perhaps uh, it is for other people but I realised that a bike like this has a big application as a commuter or a city bike so let's take the bike into the town and assess some of the things for city riding i call it the town it's a city just you know what i'm like with my language sometimes stands are center stands sometimes the side stands sometimes it's called fan tech sometimes it's called fantic you know sometimes it's, yeah there's a whole load of things that you've all seen on the channel which i get wrong from time to time but what we'll do is we'll measure oh well, let's start We're doing something now right i'm parked in traffic at these uh, traffic lights and my feet are flat on the floor floor four my feet are flat on the floor which is really nice the bike uh, i can sort of even lean the bike over standing up and it's i don't feel any worry at all it, i've got a big platform strong stable platform of which to kind of control the bike with my legs it just makes you really relaxed um the other thing is which we'll come on to when we get around the traffic lights is that the bike is is nippy enough for city riding you don't really need anything more than 250 cc i mean to ride in the city these days it, if you want more power then by all means you know buy a bike with more power but you don't really need you probably need 30 horsepower just to get you off i mean that'll get you off the lights quicker than a lot of the cars in the city so you can nip around traffic and so on so we've got on this bike 40 horsepower so really we don't even need to get the bike up to the 8000 rpm <laughs> it is revvy 
<laughs> oh dear, revving a bike out never gets old, no matter how times, you, no matter how many times you do it. So let's just do a quick. Oh, he's coming out. That's a bit naughty because I can't change lanes. Are you joking? He's actually swearing at me. You on camera? No, there's not there. The, the, go and look. There you go, got him. Got him. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't ride in the city. I don't really get how that happened, but there you go. All right, let's try and focus back on the review. <sighs> I mean, maybe that was my fault. Maybe you should be, um, you know, cautious of cars pulling out. But tell me in the comments, was that my fault? I always, look, I always look back on these things and like, I'm like, am I? I don't know. I'm lucky I've got the camera on, you know. Well, that's another reason for having it on. <laughs> but okay, back we go. Back in the city. Gosh, getting into the country. But back we are. All right. See, just accelerate a little bit and nip round traffic. Going up and down through the gears, it's kind of seamless to be honest. I could probably do with the gear lever being adjusted just one little touch on the spindle so it's lower down to my foot, but because I've got these little um, shoes on, but it slots into gear very easily, minimal effort. Got six gears on this little bike, but for the city, you probably need second or third. I'm keeping it below 4,000 RPM. Of course, I could go higher um, if I wanted to ride a little bit more antisocially, but no need. Um, so I'm just kind of cruising on the bike. Now, let's talk about the brakes. Again, we're not hammering it around corners or anything. The front and rear brake are actually unbranded. Like if you look at the... Um, if you look at the braking performance, there's no one behind me. I'm going to stop in an abrupt stop. So look up, car. And it performs fine. I mean, obviously this bike is very lightweight, and that's the, the other thing we're going to come on to later, is, is really how much you value the bike not weighing a lot. So if that's something that you're interested in, and then perhaps this is a differentiator between the Royal Enfield Gorilla 450 and the Triumph Speed 400, uh, now the speed 400 is apparently 170 is that dry weight we'll have to check whereas this bike is 165 wet the scrambler 400x is 180 but again i don't know whether it's dry or wet and the royal enfield gorilla i think that's 185 with 90 percent fuel and oil i know that because that's how royal enfield uh, quotes its weights so those bikes feel like a a bigger bike um, if you know what I mean they feel like a full-size motorcycle whereas this feels like a city bike so I would probably say on the terms of the size of this bike if you are my height or taller you might find this bike a little bit small for you so consider that um, like two-wheel willy obviously six foot five this bike's gonna be too small for him make that light you see, up to 30 miles an hour in no time at all there. Um, yeah, this bike will be too small for him. So I think if you're of shorter stature and you want a city bike, it doesn't break the bank, then this little thing's fine. All right, guys, we're going to head up to the motorway. I'm just going to blip up and down the motorway just so you can see what it's like at 70. Right, here we are. Not something I recommend as a motorcyclist, but... We're going to indicate and drop down onto the M5 motorway, going northbound. Little stretch between Junction 7 and Junction 6. And I'll tell you what this bike's like at speed. So 50 miles an hour. Obviously you're getting a bit of wind rush, but it is clean air because of the um, there's no screen or anything. Now, I'm in 6th. I can't really do much because uh, this car is not making progress, but we'll indicate. Let the traffic know what we're doing. Okay, now we're doing 63. Increase the speed a little bit. 
670 and it needs to stop indicating. Okay, past this caravan again, a bit of wind blast, it's got no protection of course. But I guess what you guys want to know is how fast this bike will do on the motorway. So um, let me just check. A Right, I hadn't indicated above 70 miles an hour. <laughs> I won't go into exactly what speed it was, for obvious reasons. But you've got no problem with this bike doing extended motorway speed. And if you notice in the revs, we were at about seven. So it still had a little bit to give as well. And I think having six gear really helps. Obviously it's got a longer ratio in the six, so you can really stretch the bike's legs. I would probably cruise though, I don't know, 55, 60. I do want most bikes to be honest, no matter how, how powerful they are. For fuel economy, it's a bit safer, less, less wind blast, wind noise, etc. But listen, talking of wind noise, how great is it to not have that crackling and buffeting? It's, that, it's really, really good to have a naked bike. Well, not necessarily specific to this bike, but it does, it does improve, it improves my experience, but also improves your experience when you're listening to it. I haven't got that horrible crackling and buffeting. So we'll pull off the motorway uh, at junction six and then nip back through the city. Do a little bit of dual carriageway work just to get back into Worcester so I'll use this opportunity just to cruise at 70 and just tell you the experience so like we said before you're getting a little bit of wind blast but nothing too bad and um, I've got not that much vibration in the mirrors the mirrors are shaking because of this horrible road surface but they're not vibrating with that from the engine in the bars I've got like a low frequency sort of, kind of I can feel it, but it's not unpleasant. And if I smooth onto the, if I smooth, if I move onto the smooth, then it all goes down. Same with the pegs, I can feel a little bit at 73 miles an hour, but not intrusive at all. And um, from the seat, I've got nothing, so the seat's comfortable enough that it doesn't impact you in any way uh, with the vibrations. So let's cruise down to 55 miles an hour in six. Go on. And that's just a walk in the park. Nothing, smooth as butter. So yeah, really, really like that. Now this is an area, you know we talked about in the introduction that, that Vosges has is, is basically got its work cut out. There's some big hitters in this sort of sub 400 cc roadster space some big hitters indeed where the road the, the rose the rose where the Vosges brings it is coming in with a twin and the smoothness of a twin there's not that many bikes and it's a parallel twin as well not a v twin there's not that many bikes in this range that are parallel twins <laughs> If you want this, if you want a bit of a smoother ride, then perhaps that's somewhere where the Vosges can can pull back some points. All right, we're approaching the city limits. That's what they would have said in the old days. So I'm going to drop down to 30 miles an hour in preparation. We can be quite flexible. You see, you've got the handy gear indicator. It's like great if you're a new rider. Um, not all bikes have it, particularly modern retros. They seem to sort of think it's more, more acceptable to drop a gear indicator because of the style because obviously the original bikes wouldn't have had a gear indicator but you see in fourth you can still pull so that means it's got quite a spread of torque this isn't this is a revy bike but it doesn't mean it's lacking uh, in torque and that means it's forgiving if you're a new rider or you've, you've um, you're a returning rider or a young rider or something like that where you perhaps just need a little bit more of a forgiving machine to you know, just turn the other way <laughs> if you uh, make a mistake. You don't want something that punishes you for every slip up with the gears or um, the throttle or the brakes, you know. It's, it's nice to have something that sort of forgives the rider a little bit. 
Um, so as we come into the city, I'll just go and talk about what we see in front of us. Again, typical Vosges mirrors, love them. They've got that like lateral viewing angle, so you can see, I can see houses off to the side there, which is great. Um, mirrors are quite stable. I've got some vibration there, but it's like, it's more of a wobble than a vibration. See, I think it's due to the road surface. It doesn't, like, I can read the plate of the car behind me. So it's more like a shaking, not a brrrr vibration, which is, you can't see anything out of. Um, the grips and bar and mirrors, I mean, bar and mirrors, are, uh, bar and uh, weight, sorry, are quite nice. That obviously helps minimize the vibration. The, the grips are just plain, nothing really to report. The brake and clutch lever, non-adjustable, but then this is a, 3,800 pound bike, depending on where you buy it. Um, you've got the typical Vosges switch gear. Now I will mention this is the outgoing and sort of more cheaper switch gear. If you look at the new 525 DSX, the 525 AC, they replaced the bright red with more of a wine red and just put the hazard lights on this side, made everything a little bit more, more upmarket, m matted out the the black plastic a little bit more so it's got less shine to it they obviously know how to make stuff look more premium even though it perhaps doesn't cost a penny more but it looks better so you're still on the original switch gear which obviously to me it's like a duck to water because i rode a bike for 10,000 miles with this switch gear you got some other nice things like um the fork toppers are brushed aluminium you got this painted silver bar and then this kind of thing, is that meant to be Vosges in the middle? I don't know, but it's got Torx bolts, it's all blacked out, it matches, it's just kind of nice. The wiring, similar to my Vosges, they've got within this uh, plastic unit here, okay, a lot of the bike is plastic, we'll have to get that out of the way up front, but the cables are rooted really neatly. And so, so many often, so many often, so often, or so many times you hear people complaining that the cables are rooted in a crap way, but here, neat as you like. So, from the way you're looking at the bike, it all just feels pretty, pretty nice. Let's get on to the main sort of highlight of this bike, which is the, the I was going to say TFT, it's actually not a TFT. It's a colour LED screen. LED? God, I'm getting so confused now. LCD. Whichever one was the original black and white, I think it's LCD, wasn't it? Because LED is like those Samsung TVs, which are which was a, a very high end, so it must be LCD. So it's an LCD screen, but it's colour. Um, and to be honest, I actually quite like it. I think it looks a little bit more funky and fresh. Hello, buddy. Looks a bit more funky and fresh. Uh, muck off. Do not buy muck off for cleaning your bike. I bought it and I just don't think it's worth the money. You always see it on discount because it's kind of crap. Anyway, side note. But with this screen, I think it's kind of funky and fresh. It gives the colour gives it the feel of a TFT, and I originally said in the, Vosges, the other Vosges review that having a TFT on the bike was this, that and the other, but it's not a TFT, it's, it's actually a colour LCD, so bear that in mind, if you want a, an L, oh god I'm so confused, if you want a TFT, Harley Rider giving me the nod, <laughs> that's nice isn't it, so all, all the time we say Harley Riders don't nod and this, that and the other friendly as you, as you like but yeah back to the screen which will eventually finish the point I think it looks brilliant honestly I, I wouldn't complain that it's not TFT it just for me it works I think it looks retro I'm a kind of child of the 80s so I love all that maybe it just sings to me if you're 21 and you grew up on TikTok maybe you'll think that looks crap so that's probably a personal preference there Triumph man out on his triumph i'll give him a wave as well he smiled i mean look at this guy he's going for it <laughs> he's like riding like he's from china or something <laughs> so the whole way this bike rides i should do something sensible shouldn't i the whole way this bike rides in the town is actually really really easy and forgiving so, I mean, look, look what I can do. I've just got this smooth, I think it's a buttery smooth engine, particularly sort of below 50 miles an hour. And you can't say that about the single cylinder competition. And you really can't. Now, what we need to uh, also check is the throttle. So let me just slow down here and I'll, I'll brake and then I'll just edge forwards on the throttle. Talking of the smoothness. 
doesn't seem too bad. Not possible to get a full test here though. I need to go on, out in the country and do a bit more of a uh, countryside blast. But yeah, it's very forgiving in the city. You've got but like buttery smooth engine. The bar's just big enough. You've got a sharp turning circle. It's lightweight. Your feet go down easily. It's, it's very small, so it can nip through traffic. If you get your confidence up and you want to do some filtering, then you could definitely do so on this bike because it's nice and nimble and small. I mean, you can hear, hopefully on the audio, that it just... It's got such a smooth engine uh, note. Now, the note isn't like raspy or loud or anything. It's actually quite un unoffensive, unassuming. Um, but, oh, another thing, see this is the thing, people just, people are just kind of doing what they do. People just do what they want these days, it's wild. It's really on your game as a motorcyclist. Right, we're going around this multi-storey car park. And uh, you can see the headlights nice and bright. You see, it's lighting up the back of the car in front. So obviously we got full on LEDs. And I'm finding it really easy to control this bike at slow speed on the clutch. You see, you just roll up this hill. And I'm not using the front brake or rear brake, I'm just dipping the clutch. Oh, I have to start the other. Mr. Porsche is doing a nice little reverse. Man, that was a confident park. <laughs> that guy is so impressive. <laughs> he used to do that in a Porsche, in a multi-story car park with literally no worry in the world. <laughs> right. Here you go, I'm going to reveal something that I've discovered. There's a little bit of a jerk on the on-off throttle, you see? Which you don't notice out on the road, but prolonged kind of on off and becomes a little bit apparent however it's not any worse or really any oh reversing i thought they were going in front woods back a little bit the on off throttle isn't any worse than any other euro 5 or 5.5 bike oh they're going in that one well that one. they're spoiled for choice that was nice wasn't it Kind of gave me a wave for waiting. False neutral. Go on, up to second. Right, here we go. Up in the multi-story. I think we'll stop here for a look around the bike. Well, as this bike is mainly, or its best application, is probably a city bike or an urban commuter, I've come up to the top of this multi-storey car park just to give a, a setting, really, that kind of suits the bike. We'll just have a little bit of a walk around, look at some of the good bits and the not-so-good bits of the Vosges. Now, one of the most striking things is probably the yellow tank on this particular model. Now, they do it in grey, they do it in yellow. I think yellow is by far the best. It reminds me of the Royal Enfield Meteor 350, which had a nice bold yellow paint job on the fireball edition um, with the scrambler the 525x which is also a, a Vosges yellow and gray kind of combination a train or something going on down there so someone in the Vosges factory they seem to love the yellow I like it as well um, coming around to the front you've got these kind of chunky they look like 43 millimeter upside down forks just machined nicely and then you've got like a matte finish on the lower clamps here and then going down you've got a single disc probably 280 300 millimeters and unbranded brakes but the brakes are quite sharp so I mean who the hell cares if it doesn't say anything on them um, that's only a vanity project because the brakes are really good wheels you've got these casts with the machined spokes nice detail i think they've gone to a little bit extra to make it a bit more refined and then you've got 17 inch tires front and rear now the tires are core sun which not a widely known brand to us here in the uk but at least in it's baking hot now isn't it so i, I don't feel anything untoward with the tires but it is absolutely roasting so the tires are nice and warm they're obviously street tires 
They've not got any, any tread pattern or anything like that. They're primarily for road use. Swing the bike around a little bit. You can see this nice stylish LED headlight unit. Um, and then you've got LED indicators as well. They're nothing to write home about really. They're just kind of plain Jane indicators. Now this bit here, I think Sue's mentioned as well, it is a little bit plasticky. It, it's cool in the fact they've got different colors and, st and so on, but it is a bit plasticky. The other thing as well, which is a little bit plasticky, is probably this thing here. I mean, it is nice that they've used an array of materials for the plastic and the kind of carbon fiber effect. Make it look a bit different, but really it's, it is just a plastic piece. This uh, netted effect over the ho braided hose is kind of nice as well, as is the machined engine cover with Vosges written in it. For the money you pay, the bike looks quite aesthetically pleasing, to my eyes anyway. Can you see me? Am I in the frame? We're going to take a little bit of a look at this, all this stuff in detail. Um, and really, it, the devil's in the details with these kind of bikes that are uh, affordable. You, you can either get one that someone's taken care to design, look after the little details and finishing touches, or you can see where it's just been slapped together. Luckily, I'm pleased to report that the Vosges is in the former. Um, it all looks like with the machined face to the engine there and the Torx bolts all color coded as well. Everything here is just very neat, it's like all the little uh, cables are clipped. Everything's uh, just totally immaculate and just nice. But I'll just say overall, this kind of appearance that draws your eye, the sort of engine and the rear subframe and everything, which actually is a removable rear subframe. It's quite an, adv an advanced feature. Um, so it means that if you did drop this bike and bent the rear, you wouldn't necessarily have to write the bike off. You could potentially repair it more easily. Right, hopefully we're still in focus. Don't know if I am or not. Um, okay, at the back you've got this nice sort of Vosges-esque. Um, oh, there's a security guy going to come over and talk to me. Let's see what he says. Vosges-esque uh, headlight here. And um, you've got some handle grips for the passenger. I don't actually think that they're that good a uh, um, thing for securing luggage. Like I had to bring the camera equipment over here and I actually found it quite problematic to get the, the handlebar, uh, the, the luggage strapped to these grips. So you, it's a little bit of a pain when it comes to, um, to securing luggage to the back of the bike, to be honest. Hi mate. Okay, mate. Cheers bud. Yeah, Thank you. Spaces, which it isn't at the moment, so it's okay. No, I, I would, uh, yeah, I, I came all the way up to the top to find it a bit oh, clear, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know that bikes haven't got a paint. Oh, okay, oh, well, that's so good. The middle barrier yeah. on the entrance and the exit, that's why it's shorter. So always go for the middle one? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Which I didn't do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's okay, no worries, but you know for when you're going out, so when you go oh, when you go out, the, go out the middle one again. The middle entrance and exit. Yeah. It's designed shorter, so you can get past. <laughs> nice one, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. I'm, I'm going out now, so I'll go in the middle one. Right, so we now begin the section of the, of the review where we're out in the countryside in rural Worcestershire. Madrasfield to be precise, that's a really nice house isn't it? So what's this bike like when you get out of the city? What could you potentially use the motorcycle for on a Sunday going out to a country pub? Something like that, there's a nice church. Wow. Um, obviously it is a roadster, it's got 40 horsepower and it's got a six speed box. So if you wanted to press on a little bit, you know the suspension's good enough, non-adjustable obviously, but good enough. You've got 17 inch wheels. Uh, for my purposes the, the tires are nice and warm, so it, it's a revy bike. 
you know, which adds to a bit of a visceral riding experience. So, uh, yeah, what's not to like? Really, what's not to like about it? Um, let's. Just, I'm going to try and lean a little bit. There we go. <laughs> you can never really get enough corner angle on the road. Let's just drop down into fifth. Build the revs. All I'm doing probably now is looking a bit silly to people behind. But this is what you call B-road blasting. And generally it's that old adage, isn't it? It's more fun to go fast on the slow bike than it is to go slow on the fast bike. And so just by enjoying the reviness of the engine, piloting the bike around these bends, probably getting a little bit more wind noise now. Not buffeting, just wind rush the helmet you can lean over a little bit as well riding position want you to lean over the bars and then obviously look at that that's just the rear brake that wasn't even the front brake then I'll see these brake these bikes are very well braked these days if you read a review and it says the, the bike doesn't brake very well then gosh you're uh, that's very rare for that to happen oh no I can see a summer thunderstorm coming Damn, that's going to get me absolutely soaked. Yep. I've literally timed this the worst. Alright, well, I hope we can get out of it. Oh, not yet we can't. We're still in the 30s, slow down. Ah, okay. I thought that was the end of the village. I'm going to head towards Blue Sky, guys. which ooh, <laughs> is probably going to be up there, left. Um, left or right, left or right, left or right. Let's go right. Acceleration test. Up to 10,000 RPM. I love going through the gears on this little thing. Amazing little thing. Whoa! Doesn't mess about, does it? But well, I wasn't fast enough to elude the rain, sadly. So, if you did want to ride the bike out on a little B road to go to a country pub, it'd be perfect for that. Or if you're Say you're like a younger rider just getting into it and you want an affordable bike for multiple uh, applications like doing your commute, like uh, going to the shops, like going to a little coffee shop to meet some friends, maybe even going on a date. I mean, hopefully the person you're going on a date with will think this bike is cool as anything. Um, but yeah, if you want to go out and then on a Sunday out in the countryside, or like me, you live half in the city, half in the country, then you kind of got everything, haven't you? Like, it's just... It's a bit of an all-rounder, um, which I personally like. Go across Malvern Common now. Towards the blue skies, that's where we're going to go. Very revy. And I think that's because this bike has got 322 cc's in the parallel twin. So it's achieving its 40 horsepower by revving out, um, which is actually quite a visceral way to ride. It's also quite a, a, a safe way for new riders. You don't want to get on a Suzuki 776cc parallel twin, that platform is in multiple bikes. And you'd be riding along like this and it, in fourth, you do the throttle, slip on the throttle, and all of a sudden you've gone off the back or crashed. I mean, silly as it sounds, it is nice to have a bike like this, if you know what I mean, that that uh, you rev out. It's just it's a little bit safer for new riders. So if you're somebody's mum or dad and you're watching this review, then uh, take that into account that you don't want your 18-year-old or 17-year-old on a bike that's got a ridiculous amount of torque. Um, even if it's got within the A2 license limit for power. Right, it's time to summarise, draw this video to a close. 
I really enjoyed my time with the Vosges 350 AC. I think it's a great city bike, a great commuter bike, and a great bike for a new rider or relatively inexperienced rider. Also good if you're wanting to step down to something a little bit lighter and smaller displacement. And overall, the fit and finish is, is typical Vosges. Everything is just kind of nice, nice use of materials, nice style here with the rear LED tail unit. You've got the upswept exhaust, the machining on the engine, the braided hoses, a nice colour LCD display. So the swing's on it, which lets car go past. There's things on it which make it stand out a little bit. Um, like the screen, uh, like the obviously the tank is a nice feature. I wish they offered more colours, it's only yellow and grey. I mean, imagine that with red, green, blue, different hues. I mean, that would be a nice um, draw a few people's eye, wouldn't it, if you could have additional colours. But as I mentioned in the, in the intro, um, the Vosges has got to do a lot because it's got hot competition in this segment. So we've got here a very nice... 321, 300, I think it's 322, 322 cc parallel to win, buttery smooth. Um, I've got 40 horsepower, I think 42 in some markets, but I think we're rated at 40 here. And it's very lightweight. Um, so if I just sit on the bike here, we're at quite an incline. I'm on this gravel car park, but I'm in 165 kilos. And there'll be people that say that isn't very light, but to me, it's just a nice, easy, manageable weight. And obviously I've got 780 millimeter seats. I can just throw my leg over. Having that small displacement, but a powerful, relatively powerful engine. So you have 40 horsepower from a 322cc. It's quite revvy, um, but not in a buzzy, annoying way. And you don't sort of wait for the power. I just mean the power sort of builds linear as you open the throttle. It'll go up through the revs and it gets more exciting as the revs build. So I quite like that about it. If we were to look at where it scores points, it's probably in this buttery smooth motor. We did some motorway miles. You could easily ride on the motor with this bike. It also probably scores um, in the fact that it's a little bit cheaper. So if you think this bike is free, I think 3999 um, is the recommended price, but you'd probably be able to find it a little bit cheaper if you looked at dealer offers. Now, if you compare it to its main competition, the Gorilla 450, which starts at 4850, but if you want the one with the screen, you're at 5050, so it's another thousand pound on top. And then if you want the Triumph, that now is 5200 because they've ended the introductory pricing on that. So you're looking at another 1200 for the Triumph. So if it's price that's a concern, or smoothness of the engine, or you want a manageable bike with a low seat height because the Speed 400 isn't that low a seat. Uh, I'm, I'm not really fully flat footed on the Speed 400, which is crazy. You think it's a small bike, but it's not. But this bike with 165 kilos, manageable, low seat. It's a proportionally small bike, which is quite nice for nip nipping through traffic. It does well in those aspects, but it's obviously got to go against these kind of giants um, who have now moving down to, to offer small capacity roadsters with the 17 inch front wheel, also six speed gearboxes. And they've got all of the accessories and all of that sort of heavy hitting brand uh, weight behind them. So it's Vosges is an underdog specifically, or especially this bike, the 350AC, because it's in a competitive market segment. I really enjoyed it. I could use this bike myself for yeah, go popping into town, popping out. I think that the only downside for me is it's, it doesn't have a great deal of luggage storage capacity, um, and that's a bit of a pain. Uh, you know, if it had like a little rack or something, that would be advantageous, but kind of a minor thing. I think with a 12.5 litre tank, it sounds small, but you're never going to run out of, of, of fuel in a hurry because it's just going to sip fuel, isn't it? Especially because it's a revy engine. So if you keep it below four or 5,000, um, then you're basically going to sip fuel and you'll probably get 250 miles per tank, as I, I, I guess, to, between 200 and 250. Uh, okay, guys, well, let me know what you think about the little plucky Vosges. Um, definitely an underdog, but a, but a very lovable little thing. And Susie and I have, have nicknamed this bike the Bumblebee. 
and I think it's an app name. It's light, it's kind of, it's flighty, it's buzzy. And obviously my particular one has got a bright yellow gas tank. So I'm loving it. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.